I've been animating our recent video in Blender Grease Pencil, and I kind of wanted to go over how I'm doing it, and also one of the problems I'm having that's actually made it really frustrating. A new deck of cards with girls on the back. And I sat down and wrote a letter to my wife. So my band, Lorenzo's Music, we record all of our stuff in open source software and tools. We even use an open source operating system called Ubuntu Studio. So everything we do is built on open source. We release our music under Creative Commons, but this particular project I'm actually doing that is a cover song, so it's not. I wanted to animate a video. I've been wanting to use Blender Grease Pencil for a long time. I've, I used to animate in Flash, and I just wanted to use this, and they have a 2D software feature in it that's called Grease Pencil. And I've been looking for a reason to use it, and this video is the one that I decided to start with to learn how to use it. It's been fun so far. I've been releasing these things one line at a time in the song, so that way I can kind of tackle all the scenes and it doesn't become a huge project. I've learned a lot, and I've also learned a lot of problems that I'm having with it. It may be me. I might be doing something wrong. I don't know, but let's take a look at uh, how I set it up, and then I'll show you some of the... Th one of the things that goes wrong will probably happen while I'm doing this. I've been releasing these songs as YouTube shorts, so they're one line at a time, when I animate them, I put them out, and right now I'm up to scene eight, which is the bottom of the playlist that I created on our YouTube channel here. Let me uh, go over to Blender and actually show you the setup that I have, first of all. All right, so here's scene eight, the one that I had just released today at the time of this video, and there's the guy that I've been drawing in the, in the uh, video the whole time. So if I zoom back here, you can see all of the... It doesn't let me scroll down all the way. That's another thing. I realized that it doesn't have infinite scroll. So if I actually go out into the 3D world, you can see there's the guy. And if I scroll back, you can see more of there it is in the 3D layout. And I can actually move around and show. There's the camera, that little triangle. And there's the guy standing in the white background and all the little reusable pieces that I've created in the video so far. Go back to the actual 2D animation layout. There's the guy. And I have, down here on the bottom, I have each one of these things that are on the screen as a different layer. Starting with, I got the body. So if I turn that off, you'll see the body goes away. And then, let me scroll up more here. So if I go to the parts that are actually in the screen now, which is this white area, there's the... Uh, the hands and stuff disappear, which you'll see there's some reusable hands that I have over there, right over there. The mouth, which I've been reusing mouths, so you can see I've got the ones that I pull off the screen and switch them out while he's talking, which this layer right here is the mouth. So you can see these are the different keyframes where the mouth switches places. So if you look over, so you see I pull them in. I take the one that I don't want and I pull it over there and then move the one that I want into place. So I've got them all just sitting over there so I can swap them out while I'm having them talk. And that's how I'm doing the talking stuff in there. All right, now you're hearing the sound which I have on the video editing side here. Imported the song here, or at least the segment for this song right there. And this will match up with what's going on on the 2D animation side. So when I scroll through, those will be there and I will match the mouth up with it. Now, here's the problem that I'm having. I'll go along listening to it, I'll go one forward, and I'll listen for when a sound comes through. Going through each one of the mouth moves. Doesn't seem right. See, now it's doing the thing where it'll stick on one note, or one, one it'll stick on one sound that I'm doing with the mouth, and it doesn't match, damn it. So I gotta restart it. Now I've restarted it. Let's go back to that scene. Then here I am, now I'm saying new. The thing that helps too is that I also know the lyrics that I'm listening for in each scene, so it helps me animate it. There I'm saying deck. So that's how I do the mouth scenes. And so I'll have the headphones on listening to that and listening for each sound 
and uh, messing, moving the mouths that are over here on the side and switching them out. And see, now there it goes. Now the sound is gone. So now I'm scrolling through and the sound has disappeared. This is what happens. So even if I play it, now I'm playing it and there's no sound. The sound disappears and I have to reboot it so that it will work again as I'm scrolling through. And when I reboot, sometimes it catches, sometimes it doesn't. It only takes a second to do it, but it's a really annoying feature or flaw that happens as I'm going through this with the audio sound. And it makes it hard because I'm animating the mouth. It has to go along with the sound. Uh, so that part's frustrating. Otherwise, I'm really liking this uh, program. So that part became a big problem, especially I know I could time out listening to it without animating it, but it's so much easier just to animate it in the timeline. And that's what I used to do with Flash. Anyway, so here's another thing I really enjoy. If I scroll into the timeline right there, this line right here, I've highlighted the eyes layer. And if you see the eyes are in orange there showing that they're active and I can move them around. So I've got this scene here where I'm going to have him kind of blink. There he is. His head kind of bounces down and then it bounces back up and then his eyes open. So I do little things like that. And on top of it, I also made him kind of look like a pencil sketch. So that way what I can do is in the effects down here. And it took me a while to figure this part out. And it's actually, it was something I thought was going to be so difficult. And it actually was really easy. So it's kind of, as he goes along, the lines that he's drawn in will squiggle the whole time. And literally, that is just this thing right here that's called noise. It's a noise filter that you can add in the modifier properties. So when I put that in there, up here on the top, it shows all of the different layers. And down here, I've added this modifier layer. And all I did was I added the noise one, and I just set the position slightly so that it will randomize the line just little wiggles at a time. So it'll just look like the pencil sketch is kind of being drawn one frame at a time. And I thought that was a neat effect. I like it. It's kind of like what they used to do on the show Dr. Katz, only on that one they did it really big. I did it very subtle on this one, but I thought that was fun. So this is basically the whole thing that I've been animating, how I've been doing it in each scene when I do one line at a time during the song. That's how I've been animating this. I've been doing it in Blender Grease Pencil. And I've been enjoying it, except for the sound problem. Otherwise, it was kind of, after doing some studying, it was kind of an easy transition from Flash. I still do like, uh, probably just because I learned how to animate in Flash, but uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I wanted to use some free and open source software for animating, and it's been great, except for the sound crashing thing. And I got to figure out why it's doing that. But uh, got more to come. I want to say that it's going to be 24 scenes total to do the whole thing. And we're up to scene eight. So I've got quite a few more to go. They're about six to 11 seconds long, each one of them. And I've been posting them to YouTube Shorts. <laughs>